Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, March 16th, 2018. In this video, I wanted to go over uh, some options on how to successfully navigate the next bear market or even corrections during a choppy bull market. Um, and I'm doing this video largely because over the years in uh, talking to many, many traders, uh, members of the site, other people, uh, both on right side of the chart and even years before that uh, in my you know, career as both a stockbroker, a professional trader, full-time trader, uh, that m the majority, the vast majority of people out there, and I'm sure a good percentage listening to my voice right now, are not comfortable shorting stocks, may have never shorted stocks. Um, and there's a lot of misconceptions. So uh, what I'm, I'm not going to talk so much about shorting individual stocks per se, but uh, more so some con relatively conservative strategies, whether one wants to profit during the next bear market or the next correction, or they simply want to hedge a portfolio, of, a portfolio of long positions. Maybe they went through the bear market uh, from 2000, late 2007 to 2009, uh, watched you know over half of their portfolio value, at least on their equity portion get chopped in half. Uh, so, uh, and you know, we've had some some pretty good corrections along the way in this great bull. Now, again, uh, I'm not here to debate when the next uh, bear market will start, but I can I can give you my word. And I make very few promises when it comes to trading, investing, anything to do with where the market might go. But I promise you, we will we'll, we will see another bear market, and uh, it's just inevitable. So here's here's the options. If you're not comfortable shorting, let me just debunk a few myths. Um, I've seen things out there that say shorting stocks are dangerous. It's different from going long because your loss potential is unlimited. And technically, that's correct. If you short a stock at $10 and it rides up to, you know, $20, $50, $100, uh, the sky's a limit on what a stock can go up. However, if you buy a stock at $10, you can only lose, you know, all of your money because it can drop down to zero, but it can't go below zero. Um, however, anybody would be foolish to buy a short a stock at $10 or an ETF and let it go to $20, $50, $80. dollars thats what stop loss orders are for. So from that point of view, uh, there's really no difference as long as you, you know, are, are reasonable enough and everybody should use stop loss orders. Um, you know, you have just as good a chance on a, on a proper short trade setup. Uh, to make money and profit than you do on a long. In fact, I love shorting stocks because they tend to fall a lot faster than stocks rise. Um, so with that being said, I just want to set, lay that out there. Now, individual shorting, shorting individual stocks, just as going long individual stocks, you do have risks that you do not have when trading ETFs. An ETF, like a mutual fund, is diversified because it, it spreads the money among many different holdings. Uh, so you don't have that chance for a stock to gap up or down 20% after a bad earnings beat or uh, miss uh, you know, news of a bankruptcy filing, anything like that. Okay, so with, with that being said, that's, uh, you know, a lot of investors prefer the safety and diversity um, as well as liquidity in ETF. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're just going to cover a handful and um, show you, uh, you know, some of the, the vehicles you can use, again, to either make a pure play, uh, sh you know, short bet on the market or uh, hedge your portfolio if you, uh, you know, have certain core holdings that you want to continue to hold on no matter how ugly things get. This is a chart. I'm going back to 2005. Uh, forget about the periods, seven-day candles. But what I wanted to show you is how, the performance in the last bear market and then what some of the options are. Okay, this makes it a le little easier. I, I put uh, the symbol watermark up here behind there. So, uh, for example, SPY, most of you are aware SPY is the uh, the, the, the go-to, the most popular tracking ETF for the S&P 500. Uh, benefit of an ETF over a mutual fund is you can sell those throughout the day, whereas mutual funds, when you sell a position or close a position in your mutual fund, they give you the end of day price. And uh, very often you can we can see the SPY hit a price target intraday, reverse hard, sell off into the close. So uh, traders much prefer, in fact, uh, traders wouldn't use mutual funds. There's restrictions and everything else there. So, all right, here's the bear, the bull market top back in uh, October of 2007. What I'm going to do here throughout this video, and again, it'll be quick. We'll just look at a few, and I want to talk about a couple different options with these uh, short ETFs. 
there's the drop in the S&P 500. The pop-up box in the upper left-hand corner, if you look down towards the bottom in red, you can see that the S&P 500 from top to bottom, from the uh, October 2007 highs into the March 2009 lows, fell about 57%. Now, this is what I would consider, and I want to be careful with my terminology here, but the most conservative of the short ETFs, because with ETFs, a lot of you are aware, uh, and you probably heard about some of the pitfalls with leveraged ETFs. So what I'm going to start out here are with the with the non-leveraged ETFs. So in a perfect world, this this ETF, SH, it's been around for a while, it's, has a, a good liquidity. Uh, it is just a uh, inverse play on the S&P 500. In other words, it's, it does not employ leverage. So if the S&P 500 drops 10%, this one, all other things being equal, you know, less the expenses that all ETFs have, even SPY, it should try, it should rise by 10%. Uh, back in, you know, what's interesting, and maybe uh, it disconnected a little from prices due to all the volatility and the quick movement, you can see I just showed you a 57% drop in the S&P 500. Uh, had somebody, again, and, you know, we're playing the hindsight game, buying the highs, selling the lows, but had you bought SH, went long, because it's a short ETF, you buy it, uh, you would have made 95% on your money from the market highs to the lows, or at least that's how much it went up. So I'm just trying to illustrate here again, uh, you know, unlikely that anyone will catch the exact top and the exact bottom, but there's a, a an ETF that actually uh, outperformed by nearly double what the uh, S&P dropped. So you would have you know, not just uh, avoided losing money, you would actually made good money. And of course, there were plenty of opportunities along the way, pullbacks. And this is what, you know, on active trading, swing trading on right side of the chart. I'm also a trend trader. I have long-term accounts, IRAs, things like that. Uh, and this is where when we start to, as evidence builds that the bull market is, is, may be over and we may be in the early stages of a new bear market and again that's a whole nother discussion we'll look at trend indicators uh, pr breaks of primary trend lines a lot of things i've covered recently uh, then you may start to uh, you may want to start building a position here and again that's the s p 500 so uh and we'll just go look at a few other rips and dips so here's an example back here our first big correction happened uh after the this bull market that we're now started first big correction happened in 2010 and that was a drop of about 15 percent and then so if we go here you can do the same thing i'm just grabbing the bottom and if you look at the pop-up box to the left you can see this one went up about 17 percent so one thing i wanted to point out is the performance is you know very good it does a as good or even a better job of tracking the s p 500 inversely uh, than some of those uh, other ETFs that use leverage, especially when you get caught in a, in a choppy sideways market. And I'm going to speak to the, the actual, the use of the beneficial use of leverage ETFs during sharp sell-offs. I'll get to that in a second. That's also on the FAQ page, the right side of the chart. So that's it. This is one option, again, a very uh, diversified because it is, you know, uh, shorting all you know the stocks in the s p 500 which we call the broad market now for those of you that uh want a little more i'll call juice uh let me just get rid of those check boxes one second okay there we go for those of you who want uh, a little more juice what i'm referring to is a uh, qqq is a much uh, a more volatile higher beta index higher growth and it tends to rise more when the market's going up because of its large holdings and tech stocks and higher growth companies versus the S&P 500 with its utility stocks and steady eddy dividend payers. So um, back during that last bear, the last bear market, and again, these are rough estimates. I'm just trying to grab the highs and lows. The Q's dropped about 55% and had one um, been long in PSQ during the same time, they would add a gain of about 95%. So again, this one uh, outperformed uh, by nearly double what the uh, actual index fell, and again, it's not leverage. Now, when you go down, once you know the things sort of, you know, uh, you know the volatility dampened down a little bit, and we had that first big pullback. The Q's dropped here. You can see 18%, and at that point in time, PSQ went up. Should be around the same, 21, 20, yeah, about 21, 22%. So again, uh, a great alternative, and one can either. Uh, you know, this this is a long time period here. It doesn't look like much because I'm zooming out for over, you know, well over a decade here. But this this was was the uh, the bear market that we had back in late 2007 to 2009, and um, 
again so that's one option there and then finally there's a lot of them out there i'm not going to go over them all but of course you have the small caps iwm is the most liquid small cap uh, etf and uh, they have an inverse of one time again non leveraged etf rwm now i can show you the same things over and over how they outperformed or at least met the you know it, it uh, match the the drop in the Russell 2000 or the IWM uh, as far as uh, in reverse, you know, gaining that much. But I also wanted to show you there's a couple other options too. And uh, it depends again on, on a few factors. Number one, how aggressive you are, uh, your risk tolerance. Um, and maybe you have, let's say, positions of relatively small account, an IRA that's tied up in some other things. You want some short exposure, but you don't have margin in that IRA or uh, to buy you know more than the value of the ira so you want to leverage up a little bit there are of course uh, leverage etfs for each of those you can go up two times or three times on any of these etfs so on uh, iwm which is to the right there that's again the uh, one time long russell 2000 etf or small cap etf uh, you have uh, uh, twm which is the two times leverage it's called pro shares ultra short and i'm just going over the most liquid ones there's other companies out there with other etfs and uh, try to get an idea here you know here's the bear market back in 2007 to 2009 this etf went up 214 uh, percent while at the same time the iwm only dropped uh 59 percent so you can see that it vastly outperformed it and it should it's two time leverage and what i was going to get to before and again i explain this in detail and i give you the math on how it works that there's been over the years a lot of negative um, pr and articles written about using leverage etfs especially when holding for longer period of time i do agree with that um, but i've also stated you don't get that nearly as much on index etfs as you do some certain sector etfs like Nugget uh, and Dust, those are the gold mining long and short three-time leverage ETFs. They're very volatile sectors. So, uh, and on top of that, the leverage ETFs actually tend to do better than 200 or 300 percent the returns. I'm talking again. This is a two-time leverage, 200 percent leverage ETFs. When you have these quick, um, quick sell-offs, very what I what I refer to as unidirectional sell-offs and rallies. So it depends on what side. Of course, there's long versions versions as well. Um, so uh, again, if I expect a very swift drop in a sector, um, I'll often trade the you know three-time leverage ETFs myself if I'm not using futures or something else. Because again, the math. I don't want to get into it too much in this. Check out the FAQ page under the. There's a subsection for ETFs, and I talk about the leverage ETFs and how they can actually uh, do better than the 200% that you would expect in the right market conditions. But again, that's the, that's the key, the right market conditions. You do not want to park, you know, a three-time leverage ETF for, for many months, park your money in there and get caught in a sideways choppy market. Even if the market's trending the way you expect, you'll probably underperform the, uh, the move or at least what you expect out of the leverage you're using. And then finally, we'll just cover them all here, TZA three times. So again, pick your poison. Typically, uh, you know, if I had to speak generically, I'd say if you're looking for just short-term moves, this is pop. These three-time ETFs are really intended for day traders in and out because you can, you do get that decay again if you're caught in anything but a, a fairly swift unidirectional move. Uh, but I just wanted to point out your options there. Uh, going back to SPY, let's say, you know, small caps are aggressive. You don't want to get uh, uh, caught up with the small caps. Um, because they don't fit your trading style or whatever you want to stick with the S&P 500. SDS is the two time uh, short uh, ETF for the S&P 500. And again, I'm going over the most liquid liquid ones out there. And if you really want to juice it up, SPXL is the three time. Oh, no, did that wrong. SPXS. There it is. Three time bearish ETF. All right. And finally, just to wrap it up, I didn't cover QQQ, the leverage alternatives. Uh, we have QID. I already covered the one time again, which was uh, on, on Q, QQ. The one time was PSQ. I think I covered that already. If I didn't, there it is, PSQ. And if you want to juice the returns up twice, there's QID, the two time or 200% short ETF for the Qs. And then finally, uh, if you want to max out the leverage, at least as far as an ETF goes, 
you're looking at SQQQ, which is a three time. And uh, you can you can do this on your own. Most charting programs have some type of measuring tool and you can compare the periods um, where you see the corrections in the market. So uh, that's it. And I wanted to get that out there really. So I want to do this. So those of you that are uncomfortable with shorting uh, or don't know the first thing about it, uh, know that there is an option. And when you're shorting an ETF on an index, um, again, uh, you know, assuming you're using the appropriate stops, if the trade goes against you, your risk from day to day is limited because you're not, if you go with those non-leveraged ETFs, like uh, what, what, what we got, PSQ, eh, you're not using leverage. Basically, you're just going to go up or down in reverse how much the QQQs drop per day. And on, you know, on a good day, uh, they, the Qs rise about 1%, 2%, and a very on the, on, on the rare extremes, it might be down as much as 3%. You only see that a few times a year when there's periods of extreme volatilities. I'm not saying that's the absolute extreme end of a range, but you get much more than a 3% drop in the markets, and somewhere along there, the circuit breakers are going to kick in and cool things down. So uh, that's that. Hope this helps, and uh, as always, if you guys have any questions on this, uh, drop me a line uh, on the site in the trading room and I'll be more than glad to answer. Hopefully this helped. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and have a great day.